please welcome to the stage the director of the White House Office of Intergovernmental Affairs, Tom Perez. Hey, uh, you know, I was, I started out as a trial lawyer and I learned one thing early on in my career, which is the mind can only absorb as much as the seat of the pants can endure. And uh, that's a long-winded way of saying I'm going to make sure I am as quick as possible. I want to just start out by reiterating some thanks. Uh, I love Deb Holland. I love the Department of Interior. I love Assistant Secretary Newland. Can we give it up one more time for them? Thank you so much. And this person to my left, Rose Petoskey, has been with our office for about four weeks. Can you imagine? You start your job, and by the way, there's a huge summit, which is a big deal, and you're in charge from our end of getting it all together, and Rose did a bang-up job. So thank you so much, Rose. And Rose follows in the footsteps of someone who is no stranger to this room. You probably saw him here before. I suspect, I don't see him here now, but Paui Rivera is uh, one of my favorite people. Um, he, he's what I call a recidivist. He's worked with me more than one time. He's a glutton for punishment. And I'll get in a foxhole with Paui any single day of the week. So Rose, thank you so much. Um, but I really, um, I want to really say thank you again to all of you. Um, this has truly been both historic and inspirational and aspirational. Um, I hope you have seen, you know, I, 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 learn, I grew up in an environment where people, my parents taught me that you will be judged not simply by your words, but by your actions. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are people of action. And this summit is about respect. It's about partnership. It's about the future. And I think about the executive order. I think about the journey. I remember 2009, I was at the Justice Department running the Civil Rights Division. And I believe one of the first summits was, I think, in St. Paul, Minnesota. I might, I might have gotten the location wrong, but I know the commitment of the, of the Obama-Biden administration to this partnership, and we were proud of what we built. And I see in the Biden-Harris administration taking it to stratospheric levels. We redesigned this program because we try to be good listeners. My mom taught me again, Tom, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. Be a good listener. And what you told us in your feedback was less talking at us and more true consultation with people at the highest levels. Those were all fair asks, and that's what we tried to deliver. And you heard throughout the program from you know, people at the senior most levels of government. And that executive order is a blueprint, a blueprint for action, a blueprint for change a blueprint for sustainable progress. You know, I think it's really important in life to understand the moment in which we find ourselves. We are in a moment of grave peril right now as a nation and frankly as a planet. And yet at the same time, we are in a moment of incredible opportunity. I say that because I had the privilege in the Obama years of serving as the head of the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department. Our first case we brought under the Matthew, Bird, James, Matthew Shepard James Bird Hate Crimes Prevention Act was a case out of New Mexico involving the brutal assault of a Native American by two idiots. That's the most polite word I can think of to describe them. I'm proud of that progress. I had the privilege of serving as your labor secretary. And why do I bring these two things up? Most of the laws we enforced at the labor department were a product of the New Deal. Most of the laws we enforced in the Civil Rights Division were a product of the Civil Rights Movement in the 60s. I would submit to you 
the two most tumultuous decades of the 20th century were also the two decades in which we made the most progress in building that more perfect union, that more just union, that more inclusive union. We're in another one of these moments right now. The president's investments in infrastructure are unprecedented. His understanding of equity was embodied in an executive order he issued early on because he knew we had an Eisenhower moment here on infrastructure. We have an MLK moment here on equity. And we got to take advantage of it. And so there was an early on an executive order that said everything we do going forward, not just to address the pandemic, but to address the need for a more perfect union must be done through an equity lens. And that is why this executive order today and all the investments we have seen and you have heard about, the unprecedented investments, that's what it's all about. And what's really important, I always try to tell my kids, understand the moment so you can meet the moment. Because you don't want to wake up in three years and watch the moment has passed you by. And you've heard so eloquently from, from, from Secretary Holland, from Assistant Secretary Newland, and from all of our colleagues about the seemingly unlimited opportunities that we have right now. And let's seize them together. You not only have a seat at the table, you have a megaphone at the table. You have champions in Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and Deb Holland and others who are always going to have your back. That's what it's about. I confess I had a number of favorite moments from this summit. But as a lacrosse dad, you know, I really loved what we were able to accomplish, to continue that journey. And I think Mike Connors is still here uh, because I just saw him a little while ago. But we are so excited. And, and you know, one of the interesting things is that um, this Saturday night, they will award the Heisman Trophy, which is the best college football player in the country. <laughs> Any Michigan fans here so they can retort? Not me. Um, but you know, the, I think it's called the Tawaritan Award is the Heisman Trophy of lacrosse, NCAA lacrosse, men's and women's. And on that trophy... I learned from Charlie and others, are the six nations of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. That's remarkable. That is truly amazing to me. And the example you have set, and we will continue our journey together. And I think the conversations we have had around this request that you made are one but not the only illustration of the relationships we're trying to build. True equals at the table, fighting for progress. And I hope, you know, we'll see what the IOC does and we will work vigilantly. But I do know that this is not only a key moment for folks in this room. You know, if you care about lacrosse, you want the best teams in the world to compete. And y'all are the best teams in the world. And so I take great pleasure in that. I was the statistician for my daughter's lacrosse team. So uh, this one is really, really exciting. But what's more exciting, and I leave you on this note, is um, I've had the privilege of working with Joe Biden. I, I used to work for Ted Kennedy in the 90s. Joe Biden was on the same committee. So I kind of got to know him back when I had hair. And... Uh, you know, I have never met a person with a bigger heart. Um, I remember recently when we had a horrible tragedy up in Maine. Um, and again, the president went up there. So much loss of life, so much needless loss of life, I would assert. And his capacity for empathy 
and his capacity to understand what folks are going through. There's a lot of people in this country who are suffering right now. He was not born on third base. He's earned everything he's gotten in his life, and he's never forgotten where he came from. And his North Star is equity and opportunity for everyone. And the work we're doing together is very personal to him. And as someone who grew up and spent a lot of time in upstate New York, you know, as he said yesterday, lacrosse is very personal to him. So I am really, really, now the, 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 the final thing I say to you is let's not let this moment get away. Hold us accountable. Continue to contact us. Thomas.e.perez at who.eop.gov. Thomas.e.perez at who.eop.gov. I don't know if Elizabeth Reese is still here, but if she is, I want to give her a shout out because she's been working her tail off at the DPC. And I was looking for one more person that I can't quite see. Is Brent Robinson still here? Uh, Brent is with the NSC, and he has been working his tail off. We can't do this without the Elizabeths and the Roses and the Brents. You know that. And so um, I want to say again, thank you to all of you. Hold us accountable. Let's continue to build on this historic moment and let us meet this moment with pride, partnership, and power together. Thank you so much. I think that's all, right? There we go. Have a great day.